Um, yeah, I thought, oh no, John Brennan's gonna finish and then everyone's gonna leave. It's gonna be my, I had a summer birthday, so um, nobody ever came to my birthday party. <laughs> so, so, and have August 24th. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Um, but yeah, every time, every time, you know, when you're little, you don't remember the kid you went to school with like a couple months ago. I'm sure their parents were like, do you want to go to Gray's birthday? They're like, what? Anyway, so yeah, it was always like me and my cousin and like whatever boy I had a crush on, like at a water park or something. And I remember my cousin ate too much clam dip and Kool-Aid and she threw up all over the boy that I liked. That was my 11 year old birthday party. <laughs> I'll never forget. Anyway. Um, so we're just doing a Q&A. Should I talk? I'm not, I can talk about how I started doing voiceovers, and then we can do yeah. questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I was raised with my grandmother, mostly, and um, she, she had this big boom box, and that was pretty much like my toy. So I would just like do little voices, and you're like, I was talking like this, and, and there was like a little tape machine, and then I, and then I would play the little grandma, and I would uh, talk, I, they would have conversations with each other, the little girl and the grandma, and um, then I would just play it all back, and I'd put music behind it, i have another, I guess like, I need another, boombox so that I could play the music and then do the voices. <laughs> so I still have all those little tapes someplace. And um, and there were these homeless people that lived like right outside of our window. Um, there was just a mattress full of, you know, a little, they weren't a family. It was a weird, there was like only one girl, it was weird. Um, but um, I would do all their voices and talk to them through the window. <laughs> like do shows about them. Um, I have Play-Doh, I have Play-Doh. I have a little Play-Doh mattress with like little Play-Doh homeless people on it. My grandma kept it. <laughs> fossilized by now, but she's like, remember when you made this? And I was like, oh, what a weird childhood. <laughs> um, yeah, so then I, I didn't know that there was a job for doing voices. I had no idea. I just knew that I was like a weird kid who really liked to do voices. And then I thought, well, I, I should be in the theater, I guess, if I like doing things like this. My grandma, my, my, also my grandma worked in a factory and she didn't get off till really late. And there was nobody to take care of me. And there was an after school program where they would just take you straight from school to the play rehearsal and then you would do the play. So I was like in every play they did because of free childcare. Um, and so, um, so then I went to theater school and I had fun playing like old ladies and animals and just every age and, you know, just trees and, and then, um, as soon as I got to LA, I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna move to LA and be an actress. And I went there and then I just had all these boring 20 year old girl parts. And I was like, this is so boring. I've been playing like old ladies and, and like trees and mice and like all these weird things. And now I'm just gonna be playing these 20 year old girls. I didn't even feel 20 when I was 20. I always felt like I was 45. Um, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I, I, I uh, did stand up comedy. And I did impressions and stuff. This was a long time ago, but there was this woman named Anita Baker that um, was very popular. And I loved Anita Baker, and I did an Anita Baker impression. Now I can't do it because nobody knows it. But I mean, I, but I would go, I mumble just because, I mumble just because, just because I do. Anyway, um, and I was just like, I was like, I don't know what she's saying. I was like, Anita Baker, like, I, she mumbles. I don't know what she's saying, but I love her. Um, so, uh, but, but yeah, so I, I did that, but I, but I did like impressions. I did the Wizard of Oz. I was like, I want to go home. I want to go home. Annie, I'm Uncle Henry. I'm frightened. Are you a good bitch or a bad bitch? Oh, well, I'm not a bitch at all. I'm just a little girl. It's all right. It's all right. You may all come out and think, uh, as mayor of Munchkin City in the county of the land of Oz, I welcome you most legally, but you've got to better buy it legally. Anyway, I went through the whole thing. I was like, put him up, put him up. <laughs> Get him up, both of them. Anyway, I did the whole thing. And, um, and, uh, but so, but I didn't really have a ton of jokes in between. I had like a couple jokes, but they weren't that great. And I just did a lot of impressions. So this lady came up after my show at the comedy store and said, hey, and I wasn't even old enough to be, I was 18. I shouldn't even have been in there. But, um, but, um, but and she said, you know, your jokes need work, but you do great voices. You really should do some voiceovers. And so I called, she said, this number is a place called Voice Tracks West, and there's a person named Cindy Akers that you need to call. <laughs> so I called Cindy Akers, and she was like, well, we have classes and everything. And I was like, oh, God, but I'm broke. I was, I was waiting tables at Chinchin. I was, like, cleaning houses. I was, I did every job. Um, and I, I finally, like, saved up enough money. I actually borrowed my friend's credit card and put it on the credit card. And I know this is, like, a bad Judge Judy story. Like, this would be really bad had it not worked out. But um, she's like, she borrowed my credit card, she's taking the voiceover class. You know, that was where Judge Judy would have yelled at me. But, but it actually ended up working out. So it was like an $800 class. What a great friend, by the way. 
um, to let me do that. But I paid him back. Like I immediately got like seven jobs. Like the, I got an agent like right after I took the class because Cindy Akers said, "Here, I'm gonna call my friend Sandy Schnarr, who's at this agency called Avio." And um, I made this bad tape. It was just not good. And Sandy said, I, I didn't like your tape, but when you come in, and then I came in and she's like, oh my God, why is this not on your tape? My tape was just this like, really bad commercial tape. Um, so she signed me right away, and then I booked, she said, don't feel bad if you don't book anything in the first like year or so. And then like the first seven auditions I got, I got them, and I paid my friend back. The first job I paid my friend back, because it pays almost that much if you just do one job. So I paid him right back, and um, and I and it was great. And so then I, I had been trying to do some on-camera stuff before that too. I, I was like on that '70s show. I played this English teacher, and on the prom episode, I look awful. I feel like I look better now than when I was 25. I looked so old when I was 25 that the lady was like. Um, the casting director, she was like interviewing me and she's like, so, but, so how old are you? And I said 25 and she's like, how old are you really? And I was like, oh my God, I was 25. And I like got my license out and everything. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. It's just, you look terrible. Um, she didn't say that, but I think she was thinking it. And, and when I see the, when I see that 70s show, I'm like, yeah, she was right. Um, I just like had like a big forehead. It was before I discovered bangs. So I had this gigantic forehead and um, now still I have to get the, I have to get the length right because it's either like, it's like mental hospital and then French. It's like, you know, like um, but so, um, but now, but it definitely covers up my wrinkly forehead. So, um, so yeah, so I, so I did that Sunday show and I was doing, I did that Caroline in the City and Old show that you should, and I did a couple pilots and stuff. Yeah. But then, as soon as the voiceover started taking off, I was like, this is amazing, and then I'm not sitting around all day on some set, which is horrible, and it just never stopped, and I started getting all kinds of little things. I got Rugrats with Tara, Tara Strong was like the first person that I got, you know, a job with. She was, taught me tons. She was like, come sit by me, and that, that was the end of that. Um, yeah, we, we just, it was great. Now we work together all the time. Um, but, um, yeah, so, so, oh yeah, but, oh, but I got Rugrats. That was like the first thing I got. And um, I, I was playing Reptar, the little green. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like growling and stuff. And then I played this. I played Reptar, which was like. <laughs> he was the first time he ever talked. It was in some like some dream sequence or something. And um, and then they gave me a, um, Timmy McNulty, which was like there was these little McNulty brothers. And I kind of talk a little bit like this, and I just had a lisp, and I was kind of mean to people. And. Um, and so, but I was on my way to that job, and I actually, the first thing I got was a pilot called Penny Dreadful, and it didn't ever do anything. So the first big thing I got was Rugrats. But I was on my way to that job at Rugrats, and can you tell I have ADD? Um, <laughs> but I was, I was on my way to that, and I got a flat tire, and I was like, no, I need to do this job. Like, this is like my dream. I want to do voice over my first job. What if they don't hire me again? And um, I, I like flagged somebody down on the road, which and I was like, I need. Oh, what? no! It wasn't that I got a flat tire. Somebody like pulled ahead of me, and I started to get out of the way, and, and, and my car went up on like this, and it popped my tire. Oh no! And so then the guy just like kept going. So my tire was popped. You can tell I haven't told this story in a while. I was like, wait. Um, so so it was on almost accident, but I was on the side of the road, and this guy just pulled over to help me, and um, hopefully not murder me. But help me, and I said, and he goes, do you need me to call? And I said, I just need to get to Klasky Shupo. Please drive me to Klasky Shupo. And, like, and he's like, but what about your car? And I said, I'll also have to deal with that later. I gotta get to this job. So I was 15 minutes late, which turned into a pattern, because now I'm 15 minutes late all the time. <laughs> Jess is laughing because it's like, a, I don't, I feel like I have clinical lateness. Like I really feel like I cannot. Somebody told me that it means that you're really positive and like really optimistic. I don't know, I think that's just late. But somebody late wrote that and was like, see, it's not. Yeah, the people say, no, I, I, I can't. Even if I'm on, if I'm going to be on time, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be on time. I've got all this extra time to do whatever. Stuff. I'm gonna look through this stuff, like an old box of memories. I'm like, oh, I remember college. Oh, I'm late for my job. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I even we've been living in LA for 20 years, and I still am like, oh, we're gonna go to Malibu. Can we stop by Woodland Hills really quick to that sushi place? And it'll only be like 15 minutes, and then it'll be 15. And my husband's like, 15 minutes? We live in Glendale. What are you talking about? You don't get these jokes because. It's, it's not even jokes, but you know, you don't know what I know is. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Jess is only laughing because I'm bombing so hard. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I got the regrets thing, and um, and then after that, things just take off because 
Nobody wants to hire you until you get a job. Then they all wonder why they haven't met you yet. But they give it, your agent's always like, come on, like, see this new girl I have? And they're like, no, we're just, we're set for now. We have all the people we need. But then once you get a job, they're like, oh, who's this new person? Why haven't we met her? Um, so then I got all these auditions. But um, yeah, nowadays people are like, I used to be like, why don't they let new people in? And now I'm like, we're set for now. Um, <laughs> no, if there's somebody who's really good, I'm always like, there's always room for a really good person. Like um, Kari Walgren, she's been around now for like probably 10 years, but when she first started, I was like, she is so good. She's gonna be, but that only happens like every 10 years. <laughs> there are good people that come in and I'm like, mm, I'm not gonna see that person again. You know, so it's true. Like they just can't, like the personal direct them and direct them. And I, one time I thought that it, she was like, a, I was like, how did she even get this part? It turned out she was like dating one of the people that one of the big kind of star people that was on the show. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. All right, but it only works once. Um, and then there's people that are really good, but they're kind of bitchy. And those people aren't going to get in either. Because you have to be really, really nice and fun to work with. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, well, it is. It's like a party, and nobody wants to hire an asshole. Like, I mean, it's just, like, don't, it's just ruin our party. Because, like, there's no attitude. Everybody's really, really nice all the time, and you just go and mess around with, like, the nicest, funniest people ever for, you know, all day, sometimes. And and then you go home and you can't believe that they send you money for it, because like you really feel like you should be writing out a check. Um, so yeah, it's the best job in the world. And yeah, but like every 10 years, somebody incredible comes along. Like, uh, and the newest one is this guy named Trevor Duvall. Remember that name? He is freaking unbelievable. And he's, I just started working with him maybe like a year and a half, two years ago. And I and I, then I started seeing him. Now I see him all the time. He's he's Rocky Rocket 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 not Rocky Rocket. Oh, yeah, I'm old. He's Rocket on the yeah. And he also is um yeah. And he's also in the new. I don't know if you guys saw the the um the Star Wars thing that is um it's um oh shoot I'm terrible with the names. It's animated. It's, it's, animated. it's uh, well it's, it's the Lego. It's the Lego one. Yeah, but it's like peacemakers or 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 um yeah like. Some, is that what it is? Something like that. Yeah. yeah, they're looking for the the crystals. Yeah, they're looking for the crystals and everything. But he plays the the um, the main, really, really mean guy with the skull face. Yes, I'm terrible with any kind of comic. So there's some girls that are like, I love comic. Like I've always been like really into comic books. Like since I was little, it's like you are so full of it. Not. You bought those glasses at Hot Topic, and you're just gonna no. And so I don't know. I don't know anything about comic books. I don't even. Sometimes I'm like, I'm Captain America. I told people I was Captain America for like three months, and somebody's like, You're Captain Marvel. I was like, Oh yeah, I'm Captain Marvel. <laughs> it's a new show that's coming out. It's so anyway, um, but so any questions? What's your best starving and by star starving actor story? And by best, I mean most desperate. <laughs> I've heard some oh, stories. Oh God, I have so many that I mean, I'll tell you a few. Um, oh God, there's some that I probably can't tell you because they're too embarrassing. But there's a couple that I could. Um, oh, and there's a mom here. Because <laughs> like, it's really gross and weird. Um, but uh, but one time I was so hungry that I went to Food for Less and bought some pasta. And um, I dropped it, like macaroni noodles, like little like elbow macaroni, and I was like so hungry, and I was just gonna make macaroni noodles with butter and salt on it. And then I dropped it all over my kitchen floor, and I was like, oh! And I, I was so poor that I was living on a mattress that I pushed behind the wall unit of the living room of these people's house. <laughs> I mean, it was people's house. They were like my age, but so they were really jerks. Um, and we were all like in early 20s, and, and um, I, I would like push the mattress back behind the wall unit and then pull it out to sleep on it. And then I had to clean for them. That was like my job. And I still owed $50 a month rent, but I was pretty much their personal slave and I paid $50 a month rent. And I was cleaning somebody's house to pay that $50 a month rent. It was just, but I, I was always cleaning. But apparently I didn't do a very good job cleaning because I dropped the macaroni noodles on the kitchen floor. And then I was so hungry that I was like, I've got to eat them. So I like swept them up and put them back in the pot and then just gross crap just rose to the top as I boil. <laughs> I just got a paper towel and mopped the top off. And I'm like, it's fine, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna put butter on it. Um, yeah, so gosh, there's so many. And, and I, um, I also, when I moved to LA, I was a, a maid again. I worked for this place called Custom Maid. And um, and every morning I would like have to, I didn't have a car, so I would have to like get on the bus and I would get like a, my, my stuff, like my cleaning supplies and everything, because you had to bring all your own cleaning supplies. 
and um, and get on the bus with my cleaning supplies and go all over and then just make shit. <laughs> I just made no money. I, I was like, this makes no sense because the company was taking like most of the money and then people wouldn't tip because the company charged so much money that they were like, I'm already paying, you know, whatever. Why would I give? So I pretty much made like thirty-five dollars per, and it would take you all day. And man, you were tired. So I was like, I gotta wait tables or something, this is cool. And also, the last person I worked for was just such a pig. He was just so gross. I feel like he knew that I was coming and I feel like he got like a weird charge out of it. Like he would leave his gross underwear like with like the skin marks, skin mark underwear just like laying out. And also, he's, he wasn't supposed to leave dishes in the sink, but he would. Like, and, and because like, you're not supposed to, we're not supposed to do dishes, but if they had dishes in the sink, we were supposed to do them. So it was like this weird, yeah. Um, so he would just like have a freaking party. Like, I mean, there were dishes like so high. And then at one point I looked up, there was like pasta on the ceiling. Like he had had like a party. He was just awful. And I could see pictures of him like on vacation with his friends. Like, eh. And so I wrote him a note that was like, dear pig. <laughs> I just wrote like, dear pig, you're a pig. And I'm never coming to your house again. And that was pretty much the last time that I worked with those people. Like for that company, pretty much. I had a little bit of a temper. Like I would say things. I got fired a few times. One time, I was working as a hostess, and I told the people that the table was going to be ready in like I think 30 minutes or something. And then it was a really long wait. It was a really, really you know popular restaurant. And this lady is like, that stupid girl told us that we were going to be in there in 30 minutes. And I so, so yeah, and I was I was just she was talking to my friend too. They always think they're talking to the manager, but it's like no, it's my friend who I've been hanging out with. This person likes me more than you. Um, <laughs> But I just said, like, maybe you need to go in the bathroom. I think you have something up your ass. And then oh, I, got, I got fired for like a little minute. And then the then the boss liked me and he brought me back. But oh, I have a funny story about him too. I just friended him on Facebook. There was a lady who came in because I've been telling so many stories about him that I thought I should look him up. He's great. He had been like a producer of these Cheech and Chong movies in the '80s, and then he got like a really bad cocaine problem, and so he had like. Oh, what? It doesn't matter with that. I know, I know. But the sad part is, is like he was trying to put his life back together. So he, his first job was just getting this restaurant management job. And it was just the best thing for us as servers because we loved him because he, we could do no wrong. He loved actors and he hated people. And so, um, so like anything that we said was like okay with him. And, but there was a lady that he was like really red. He was like over tanned and also a little sunburned, but with like white hair. And he always had these really nice Armani suits, but they were like old. You know, they were like out of season, like by 10 years. But it was cute. He was always put together cufflinks, Earl Prevell. Um, anyway, but he, this lady came and there was a little thing that was in her salad and she was like really mad about it. And I was like, I'm so sorry about your salad. Let me take it. I, I'll get you a new salad. And then she was like, well, I just can't, I gave her the new salad. She's like, I just can't believe this. You know, I just can't believe, this. you know, that I could have choked on it. And I was like, I know, I'm so sorry. I, I, you know, I'll take it off your bill. And, and she was like, I want to talk to the manager. So I was like, all right, <laughs> go get Earl. And he comes out there and he's like, yeah, ma'am. Oh, so we got you a new salad, you know, and I went, what, comping your salad. She's like, well, I just, you know, I could have been, I could have swallowed that. that. That would have been really dangerous. He's like, you know what? How about everybody's meals comp? I'm gonna comp everybody's meal. And I'm so, and we're comping your, you know, and, and we got you a new salad. And, and she's like, well, I just could have, you know, like I could have really, and he's like, you know what? Everybody's foods come, and you know what? Why don't you pick out a dessert? Everybody pick out a dessert. I'm bringing you a free dessert. So, he, so then she's like, yeah. I mean, it's just you know because I could have really you know. And he goes, you know what? I'm gonna everybody free dessert, free food, and I'm gonna give you a gift certificate to come back and enjoy yourself. You know, I feel really terrible about it. And she's like, well, yeah. I mean, it's just because. And he goes, Jesus Christ, lady! What do you want me to do? Send your fucking kids to college? Like, you're the one who wanted to talk to the manager. But she did do a lot of free stuff though. Um, anyway, oh gosh, so many, so many. Can I, I, I have a really disgusting story. Are we, can I tell it? Okay. It's, it's really gross and it's kind of pornographic. So I'm sorry, Mom. Um, it's just really weird. Okay, I was really broke. My friend and I, we, my roommate and I, we were just like really hungry. And we were like getting, you know when you're like scrounging through the, the, um, the, the ashtray to get yeah. coins to like, we were in front of the Burger King and we're like, okay, I think we have, we can get like, we totally could get like a, you know, a hamburger, we'll just split down the middle. We were just so hungry. And so this guy pulls up in this fancy car with a sunroof and he's like, hey, girls, like that. And we're like, what? And he's like, this is so gross. He's like, hey, um, if I pee in this big gulp cup, oh, no, no, no. He said, he said, will you, will one of you guys pee in this big gulp cup and pour it on me? I'll give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> Of course we did it. Um, I, was like, I was 
was like, oh. well, first I was like, oh my god. Then I was like, so like, are we gonna do that? Tonight? I said, if you pee in the cup, I'll pour it. And she was like, okay. And I was like, okay. I said, give us the hundred dollars first. And he's like, you don't drive away. And I was like, we won't drive away, but I'm not gonna do that and then have you drive away. So he was like, all right. So he gave me, and then I was like, okay, Meryl, go. My friend Meryl, who I just refriended on Facebook too. I was like, go, go to the bathroom, pee in this big old cup. And then I was like, so, so then, and I'm sure I took all the fun out of it for him because I was really like analytical about it. Like while I was like holding that, I was like, okay, so like, do you have a trash bag or anything you'd like to put on yourself? Or am I just doing this? And he's like, no, go for it. And, I was, and, he, and he didn't have his pants done or anything. He was just sitting there. I guess he just, I don't know. Um, and yeah, yeah, he wasn't even like, no. Mm -mm. He was just like, yeah. And I was just like, did you just get your car detailed a lot? I don't know. Um, but, but yeah, so I was like, and so you don't need to prepare for this at all. I like just, on down to the side. He's like, on, and I was like, all right, here we go. And I just like, there we go. And I just like was like gross. Here's your big gulp cup, and you know I went in and washed my hands, and we uh, had a good sand. We had some food. <laughs> we still ate a Burger King though. I was like, should we go somewhere nice? He's like, no, I'll do that again next week. So <laughs> I know. We both had our own sandwich though. <laughs> Did you? I I did a, I, I worked at a I worked at a bar and I have to say I feel like I kind of did like a thing. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew how to do like the black and tans and all that stuff. And I was definitely like, you know, yeah, he was, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes, Jess. I have, I have, I have, um, first of all, I want to tell you guys I, I have the privilege of working with her, and she never said this about herself, but she is as good or better than anybody else in voiceover, as well as being one of the nicest people I've ever met. I wish I could say the same. I know. I one of these days, one of these days. But I gotta tell you, on the, on the subject of pornographic stuff, Greg, isn't it true that you used to do promos for the Spice Channel? I do. And we used to, at a cartoon that me and Gray did together, I used to make her uh, remember these promos she did for softcore porno movies mm -hmm. and tell them to me. And my favorite one was about little people. Yes. Will you please, will you please tell people? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I did. Your favorite with the Spice Channel is to young people. Yes. <laughs> a long time ago, before you could just dial up porn on your phone, um, there was a channel called the Spice Channel. And um, it was very spicy. <laughs> and I did, and I did the program. There were there was little people in a, in a there was regular sized men with little ladies, and it was called and the movie was well I'll tell I'll tell you this is the promo. I had to do my sexy voice for it. <clears throat> it's a small world after all, in a house full of little people with big appetites for sex. These little ladies are out to prove that good things do come in small packages. Itty bitty bang bang. Next. On <laughs> Because I'm half Mexican, so I, I would do, you know, I would do the, the promos that were a little bit more like this. And if they only had a few words in Spanish, I could do it, but I can't speak fluently. But it's pretty much sounds like Carmelita Fox. If anybody plays this like Cooper things, I'm Carmelita Fox, yes. Dirty ringtail, what are you doing? Anyway, um, I was like, oh, I, I got my Latin porn voice. I'll use that for Carmelita Fox. <laughs> I also, well, I, I, I needed a th I needed to make my demo tape. Gosh, this is gonna get really bad. Oh, Let's just do it. I had to make my demo tape. After I paid for the $800 class, I had to do my demo tape. And that was a thousand bucks. And like for the person who had to like borrow the bed, so I was like, oh, she, I know, but I was like, I know if I can get a good demo tape, I know I could get, <laughs> that's a lot of pee. That's like a few iced teas, like, I mean, really. <clears throat> And it's more now. It's like 2000 now. 92? 94. Yeah, and that's before you could get do it on your phone or something. She just rides to the apartment next door in Manhattan. Yeah. She's only five grand and she's got the studio. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I don't even need a studio now. I. My husband produces pop music. It's so nice on the microphone, though. 
I have missed myself. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, my husband produces pop music, and he's got a fancy, fancy studio at our house. But I, I, I put like I plug in the mic into the laptop on the um, um it's called a uh, oh shoot, oh shoot, what is it called? Apogee, an Apogee one. It sounds exactly the same as in this really expensive yeah. studio. <laughs> like, what am I doing? So now I'm the laziest person in the world. I'm just like, I don't want. It used to be like, I don't want to drive to my agent's office. Now I'm like, I don't want to walk down to the garage. Now I'm like, I don't want to turn over in the bed. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, oh yeah, so anyway, so it was $1,000 for the demo tape. And there was, my friends, like, there's an amateur contest at Deja Vu, and you should, you should, you know, you, the, the prize is $1,500 if you win. And I was like, amateur what? And she's like, amateur stripping. <laughs> like, oh my God! But I couldn't, and, I, and, I, and I'm not a dancer. Like, I'm not coordinated. I'm really, like, when I walk, I, even walking from one, if I know people watch me, I'm like, oh, like, I just, I'm like, Um, but I was like, but I really need the money. So I was like, what can I, what can my angle? So I went and I like talked to every guy in there. <clears throat> I was like, look, I do voices. And I was like, I, I can do a little, I can, a lady. I can be a witch, I can talk like this. Oh, I can make it. And I was doing, um, and they were like, oh my God, that's amazing. And I was like, I need a demo tape. You have to vote for me, please vote for me. And they were like, okay. Cause they did it by applause, you know? So I like primed the space. Then came the amateurs, quote unquote, because I'm telling you, these ladies are not amateurs. They are like traveling, that's all they do. They travel around and join the amateur contests and they had like the boobs and the long blonde hair and like totally tanned and like costumes and like like crazy, like they must have spent a ton of money on their costumes, like sparklers. One lady had like sparklers and like they get the pole and I mean, I, they were really good. And I was like this little brunette, like my hair was like, you know, I just did not. I, had, I didn't even have like good stripper clothes. I had like Victoria's, I was like Victoria's Secret. Yeah, that's where, that's where sexy clothes are. And I just had like some Victoria's Secret underwear and some weird bra. I didn't, I didn't like, they had like the bathing suit that got the, with the neon and anyway, but, um, and the clear heels. I was like, where'd they get those shoes? This like must be a specialty store, which it is. Um, anyway, but, but I was like, I can sing. So I, I, I got a Harry Connick Jr. Remember Harry Connick Jr.? Okay, well, there was a karaoke Harry Connick Jr. CD, and I sang Don't Get Around Much Anymore. That Duke Ellington, I had like, you know, <clears throat> like a feather boa. I was like, strippers, hmm, feather boa. It's <laughs> Victoria's Secret. I, just, I knew, like, I was. Anyway, so I went there, and, and I just sang, like, Miss the Saturday dance. I heard they crowded the floor. You know, and like, I did the whole thing. I couldn't bear it without you. Don't get around much anymore. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so it was so fun. And, um, and, and then the, the ladies are like, oh, that's really funny, that little girl. You know, <laughs> and, then, and they, they were like, oh, you're cute. And then when the voting happened, I just like won by a landslide. Like everybody was like, <gasps> like I mean, just I had, because I had talked to every single guy in the whole bar. So I won 1500 bucks. And I, and I got my nose. Boy, internet. I hope this is all going on. Hi, mom. Um, anyway, so it's all right. I don't talk to my mom anymore. Um, it's all right. She's just really religious, and the Trump thing finally did it. I was like, you know what? Now I'm out. I got. I'm out. I tried for a long time, and now I'm just. Yeah. Anyway, um, I just had to. I just couldn't. I was like, really tried to understand, and then I'm like, I can't. I can't do it anymore. That was the P. Was that him? That was the final. The pee, the pee guy, yeah. Oh, the, wait, oh, yeah, we see the pee guy? <laughs> oh my god, they should have given me more money. Um, <laughs> but I heard he's really notoriously cheap. Like like those gold pens he was giving out, everybody found out they weren't real. Anyway, and also like they, a long time ago, they mailed checks to a bunch of like famous people, like famously rich people, like only for like five cents or something. And they wanted to see like who was it cashed. And this is before he ever ran for president. I read this about him and I was like, oh, how funny, Donald Trump, you'd think. He was like the only person out of all the rich people that actually cashed the five cent check, which I thought was funny. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Uh, so, this is a totally weird voiceover panel. <laughs> In the borough, we don't mess around. We don't mess around. <laughs> stories. Oh uh, God, I tried to be a dominatrix once too. That wouldn't go well at all. Because I'm like the nicest person in the world. I know I play Azula and stuff, but I'm like nice. What? what? She did it for a year because she just really wanted to see the weird kinks that people have. Oh my God. She said after a year she just couldn't take it anymore. I ruined it. I had to give the lady that hired me back money because she gave me money to start before I even started. She's like, here's a thousand dollars, you know? And I was like, I, it was like, it was like a really, 
good money. Yeah, I mean, it was like, oh my God. But then it's horrifying. Like, this guy wanted us to like put electrical tape on it. And, wow. not, oh, and then like, and then like you sm know. smack him. And I, I was, I don't like to hurt people. Oh, I didn't have to do anything like that bad. I, I was out after the whipping and then like, it, there was like a little bit of blood. Yes! Because they were so tightly. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. And I, and I just was like, I can't. not good when your nominee starts crying. That's not good. <laughs> um, yeah, I really ruined his fantasy, but yeah. So she was like, I'll do most of everything. And she was doing most of it, and then I'm still behind her, like, oh, God, don't, oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, but it paid really well. No experience necessary. She was like, black bangs? No. I didn't know black bangs. Right? <laughs> It's like a really bad job though. I mean, it, it didn't really even pay very well, but um, you had like a little like bellhop outfit that you had to wear and then you were usually singing to people that were mad. Um, and whoever the person was, like to, if you're, you did something really shitty if you hired a singing telegram person, like you were really trying to like make up for something. So it was really some, usually some like pissed off woman in an office and I'm like, well, I heard today is your special day. You know, and I'm like, she's like, you know, just like, oh, is it, oh, is this from Chris? <laughs> But you can just tell Chris to fuck off, okay? Because Chris is really sorry, you know, and oh, it was just terrible. <laughs> and, was like, and you know, there's, you know, well, there's this woman named Melissa Disney who did the voice of Ginger, and I, as told by Ginger, she was like the other singing. We were from San Diego, and it was like me and her were the main singing Telegram girls for this company. Yeah. It's called Live Wires. H A P P P Y B I R T H D A Y. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <you're the> <laughs> oh my goodness. Any other questions? Okay. Um. First of all, I want to say uh, congrats on voicing like 900 plus characters. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And um, my question is. Um, out of these three characters that you voice, um, who are particularly evil, who do you think is the worst? Azula from Avatar, uh, Mandy from Billy and Mandy, or um, the High Priestess from Samurai Jack? Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> well, for until now, Azula. Yeah. Yeah, like, she's like so many. She's and she didn't even have to be. She was just. Because everybody else was auditioning for that, they said was like really yelling and things, and I just did it very cool and calm and collected because I didn't need to be evil because I was just evil. It was more creepy that way. Um, and Mandy, like, <laughs> I mean, she's more. She's so cute, you know. She's cute, and and she has a little soft. Like, so there was like, she loved Billy, you know. She was like, she wasn't like, you know, grim. She had a soft, but she put up with them. But she, you could tell she really deep down loved him, or she would have been out of there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but man, the high priestess, and I'm a mother of three children, like when she was being mean to those kids, I'm just like, oh my god, this is like, I mean, like you're training, I, I, I think that she was even more evil than Zula, like training a child army to kill, ugh, yeah, ugh, I definitely the high priestess, I, that's a new thing for me too that just came out, so I'm, I'm like not, I, here's the first question I've ever answered about it. <laughs> yes, oh, and I also played the Scottish um, daughter. <laughs> that I'm wearing the dress. I'm gonna wear it. Anyway, I don't remember exactly what I sound like. <laughs> but I'm your favorite. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. Oh, I was just wondering if you could talk a little more about voicing Azula and what it was like working with the Avatar cast. Yeah. Well, I have to say, oh, I mean, I love Dante, but I, oh, he's it's like, I'm sorry, I meant Dante, like out there in the world, Dante, <laughs> outside. Oh, he's gonna be here. I know he's here. This is the first, this is the first convention we've ever done together. Oh, right. never been in the same place at the same time. I know, my, my brother, I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't be near him. Um, no. <laughs> but I did all, like, the, the crazy scene, like, where I went crazy and all that stuff, and, like, cried the big battles with Qatar. I was all of myself in the studio, all of myself. I didn't even, I've never seen it. I've never seen the battles, I've never seen all that. But I was in tears. I just, I'm just busy, I and I, yeah, I cried when I was, like, doing the battle. Like, when I was on my own, I was, like, I was, I was crying, yeah, when I went. Did you scare anyone when you were screaming? <laughs> <laughs> well, not because I was off of myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was off of myself in the in the booth. Um, I, it was just Andrea Romano and the engineer and me and maybe a couple of the like writers, maybe. 
Um, but yeah, but, and I still haven't seen it. My son has started watching it, and I, we've been watching it together, but I've just been so busy. We're in the Gilmore Girls right now, and so we're, we're, we're making our way. We're almost done with the Gilmore Girls, then we'll start back up with Avatar again. Um, yeah, so he gets really into shows. <laughs> he was like, Titus and his boyfriend broke up. I'm <laughs> just devastated. And I was like, who's that? I was like, your friend? And he's like, no, it's Kimmy Schmidt. And I'm like, oh, okay. He's like watching the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I probably should pay more attention to what he's watching. <laughs> he's only 10. 10. Yeah, he's, he's, he's funny. Like that question? Yeah, well, oh, well, no, not on his phone. No, 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 no. Just like in our house. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he will tell me, like, he's like, that's inappropriate. I'm sorry. But I'm not, like, if I, if I try to, like, I tried to watch When Harry Met Sally and had no idea how bad it was all about sex. I was like, oh, I was like, Carrie Fisher died. We should watch When Harry Met Sally. And then I was like, uh, you need to go out of the room. Oh God, you need to go out of the room again. Oh, I think you need, and he's like, Mom, this movie's like, I need to go out of the room for this movie because it's like ridiculous. <laughs> I know, and then when she orders the food, you know, he, I, he was in the other room at that point. So, but, so, but I still wanted to watch it because I was like, oh, it's like the holidays and I want to see. Um, well, he didn't say anything about it. But then um, the next day I was getting groceries and I brought the groceries in and I said, Tex, can you help me? Um, Tex is his name. I said, can you help me, un uh, you know, um, unpack the groceries? And he just pounded on the table and went, yes, 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 I will. <laughs> yes, oh boy, yeah. Funny. I told him, I said, we're going to New York City, you're going to love it. So many great movies were shot there. And he's like, yeah, and people. <laughs> yes. Ten going on. He has YouTube, if you ever want to see his funny YouTube videos, just go on YouTube and put in Tex Hammond, T-E-X-H-A-M-M-O-N-D, -E and be pre prepared to laugh, because he's really funny. He does this character named Deb, who does crafting, he's crafting with Deb, and he's got like a wig and like pearls and everything, and he makes these horrible crafts, and, and he drinks wine, like he pours wine in his coffee cup, it's cute. He goes through the supplies, he's like, we need, we need tape, and we need scissors, and we need Chardonnay, you know, it's, it's funny, it's really funny. By the end, Deb is totally drunk. My, I told him, no alcohol in the skits, and he's like, mom, it's the whole thing, like she's a drunk. And now when I see this get, I'm like, you're right, it is. It's the funny thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> For the art. Oh, yeah, it was. It was, it was sparkling cider. Yeah, it was sparkling. <laughs> and my friend's like, I knew it seemed a little bit dark for Chardonnay. Um, yeah. So. That's awesome. Uh, Kawhi, you didn't like this, maybe our cover, but any plans for another album one day? You know, One of my favorite things. Oh, you're so sick. I've been doing these YouTube videos. Um, I, I started a YouTube channel and I've got like three videos up, I think. Um, I think it's just Gray Griffin or Gray Delano. I can't remember. I think it's Gray Griffin. Um, but there's like th there's like a Christmas song up that got tons of views. So that was because that happened, I was like, gosh, I maybe I should do more. So like every month I've been putting up a video, and I did. I've done like a couple more songs that I'm gonna put them up to. But I like my ex-husband was in a band called Old Ninety Seven, so I I covered one of his songs, um, and he was like, oh, that's my favorite cover so far. I'm like, oh, that's nice. And you worked on the album. He, oh yeah, we used to do everything together, and we're still like dear, dear friends, so we still work together all the time. And Tex is his dad, so we, we see each other all the time. Um, yeah, he's, he is, his, his band's doing great, they're like number nine on the Billboard Rock chart right now, they're doing great. I, Jess was teasing, oh no, it wasn't Jess, it was Dante was teasing that I only do my only date musicians. So. But, but my high school sweetheart was Mario Lopez, from Saved by the Bell. I guess he's from a lot of other things now. He was like my high school boyfriend. Oh, yeah, now he lives really close to me. I'm still friends with him. He's, yeah, Slater. I know. Yeah, I know. Okay, to those of you. <laughs> and that was a perm, too. He used to go have to get it permed, like being his girlfriend at that time with those curlers in his hair. He hasn't aged. He looked exactly the same from when he was like 14. I absolutely cannot agree with you more. His, his wife is gorgeous, too, so it's like nice. They're a nice little pair. But man, he, and she's like 10 years younger than him, and they look the same age. Actually, he might even look younger than her. I don't know what he's like on or whatever. Not on, that's terrible. Don't. I mean, like, you know, he's got like a secret ring or something. It's, yeah, his skin is, and, he, and of course, he's always been, he's always been into his shit. And I'm like, not, I hate working on He's like, I know. <laughs> we went and saw Pretty 
woman, and he was exercising on the chair. So I watched the movie, I'm like, can you take a break for like two hours while I watch this movie? My week has been made. I know. <laughs> yeah, he really was like, this is a pretty good movie. Yeah, he's like doing this. I'm like, yeah, and I'm like the least active person. I'm like, I would rather just never eat again than have to sweat. I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I swam for a while, because so I'm like, oh, at least I'm not like hot and sweaty. Um, but then I stopped doing it, and then I have kids, and I'm like, I don't have time for swimming. We're gonna put, try to put it in some kind of... Well, but, I, but to like really do the, like I have a toddler and I'm baby, you can't, yeah, you're watching. Yeah. I used to, from the time I was little, like, we lived in an apartment building once where we had a pool, and I was like, oh, we have a pool, we have a pool. I was like so excited. And it was like the coldest pool because it was a really crappy apartment building and they didn't pay to heat it. But I was always like, it's fine, it's fine. I like it. No, it's not a pool drama. It's not, it's not, it's fine. Just anyway, I was always begging to go in it. Uh, um. <laughs> and so that was the apartment building that when I had my period, I went door to door and told everybody the apartment building. I was 11. I was like, I'm a woman now. So I'll let you know. <laughs> I am a woman now. I just don't like I'm sure there was like a molester in the building who was like, oh, you lost my list. Um, yeah. I, I also was trying to make money all the time. I was always selling stuff. And I, I drew like a picture of, of Jesus and then I took a picture of God and, the, and then also the Virgin Mary because I thought there were only three religions, just like Christianity, Catholicism, and Judaism. That's like pretty much the only religions I knew about. And so I thought covered, got all the religions. And I went to everybody's door and was like, excuse me, what religion are you? And then if they, if they were like Catholic, I'd show them the Virgin Mary pictures I did. And I was like, they're 50 cents. And I actually sold a bunch of them. But then the manager came to the door and he was like, excuse me, um, your granddaughter's going around asking everybody what kind of what religion they are. And we can't have that here. <laughs> so, and I wasn't even supposed to be in the building too because it was kind of an older person's building. And she, she wasn't supposed to have any kids there. But anyway. What are you gonna do when your mom's a weirdo? You have to, you have to live with your grandma. <laughs> and now my grandma lives with me. She's 92 and she lives with me. But she's adorable. She's oh, she's so cute. She's really cute. She broke her hip recently, and I know it was terrible. But also, I have to say, she's like a very nosy grandma that's like always in my business and like always like down at the studio. Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And, and, and then everybody that comes to her house is like, what are you doing? Who are you? You know, and like anybody. I'm like, it's my friend. Leave her alone. You know, she's always like interrogating everybody. So I was saying like when she broke her hip, it was really sad, but it's also sort of like when your kid's in jail or something and it's like, you know what? I feel bad that they're in jail, but they're not in trouble. Like they're not like, I don't have to worry about them. And that's kind of how it was. Cause I was like, I knew where she was. She was in her bed. She wasn't like wandering the backyard, which is very cliff. Cliffy and it's very, there's a lot of stairs and she's always on the stairs. So at least I knew she was safe, but you know, now she's back to her old shit. She's in my <laughs> shit. I love her. I love her. Keep her busy. Do a YouTube video with her or something. Yeah, we've done, oh my God, there's a whole video that I did, but you can't put on, I don't want to embarrass her, but she was telling me all the reasons you should never do it. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay. I had to start the camera rolling. I was like, and what was that you were saying? She's like, because you will die. Because you will die. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, my, my mother had a friend who did that and she just, she was in the hospital because everything is just falling out. <laughs> um, it was terrible. <laughs> And she's like, your grandfather tried to do that. I said, no, stop it. Don't do that. And she said, and I told him, if you want to do that, go with the neighbor, Mr. Hennepin. They had some, they had some big neighbor. Oh, yeah. And she's like, and he didn't want to do it. Of course he didn't want to do it. It's terrible. Never, Mijita. The other way, all you want. Just all the time. All the time. If you saw the video, she says, like, all the time. I'm like, really, all the time? Okay. Um, but yeah, she's really funny. Uh, but I can't put those up because they're horrible. <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> she usually, like, she makes herself un-YouTubable by, like, talking shit about somebody in our family or something. But I can't. It's, like, golden, golden, and I'm like, ugh, I can't put it up. <laughs> yes. Speaking of horrible, do you have any, like, what, what's a horrible session story? What, what was really bad? Oh, yeah. One time I did a Christmas special for this guy that was like an on-camera director and he thought he was somebody, I don't know who he was, but he thought he was pretty special. And, um, and it was like in this, you know, studio where he had to be, he wanted to be in the studio with me, like really close to me. And then he was like, he had his finger like right there and he was just going like, 
and action. Like, like, like right here. And then I'm like, I'm like, okay. And I'm trying to do the lines, but he's just like there. And I'm so used to being in my own world. It was just so weird. And I, I yeah, I, it, 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 I think it does air every. It's like, it's like, it's kind of like a low rent Christmas special. But I think that some some networks air it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've had. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. That's okay. No. Oh. Going back to your grandma, I I saw um, I mean I saw a video of you talking to Tom Kenny about saying that your grandma doesn't like SpongeBob anymore. Oh yes. <laughs> My grandma, we went to, we went to, I take her with me to work a lot. Well, before, before she fell, she's getting better now. She's walking now. Oh, but, um, so once she's totally better, we'll be back at work. But um, she has slept in every lobby in Los Angeles. She's always just like this little Mexican lady, just like, uh, you know, just out. <laughs> People come in like, there's an old woman sleeping out there. And I'm like, I know, it's my grandma. I know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God. Sorry, like I was ready to talk about her, and then they're like, "Oh, sorry." Um, but yeah, no, we were at Nickelodeon, and you know, they got SpongeBob everywhere. My grandma was like, Ugh, "What's the big deal about that little piece of cheese? I'm so, sad. I'm so tired of that little piece of cheese. It's so silly." And she was telling it to Jill Kenny, who's Jill Tally, who's just Tom's wife. And so Jill was like, "I don't know. I'm, I'm sick of that piece of cheese too." I don't know. <laughs> I'm a joke, you know, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard of that little piece of cheese. He's on pajamas, he's on movies, he's a statue. I'm so tired of that piece of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's so. Also, I had Carlos Alice Racky, who plays the Taco Bell dog, you know, and many other things. But he's on Fairly Odd Parents. We were, we were doing Fairly Odd Parents. And, um, yeah, he's Cracker, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was sitting out there and I thought, oh, my grandma would love this. My grandma knows Taco Bell. She loves that place. I don't care what they say about Mexican people not liking Taco Bell. Grandma loves it. I love what? Every Mexican I know, it's like they want to punch me in the face. For you to talk about? Yeah. So like, my oh, grandma oh, is the most, um, oh, she hates her own ethnicity. <laughs> she, she is a self-hating Mexican. So she likes everything American, like everything that's not her. She even changed her name. For, she's like, I don't want to be Mexican. I, I'm going to be Italian. And so, but then, so we go to the, and then she changed her name to Alicia, which I'm like, oh, that's a Mexican name, but whatever. Um, and so, so then we went to the doctor's office and the doctor was like, Alicia, Alicia. And she was just like. And I'm like, that's you, Italian lady. Are you gonna go? <laughs> she was, yeah. So, <clears throat> so she really likes Taco Bell because, yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah, she everything American, everything. Um, but oh, so I thought, okay, the Taco Bell dog. You should talk to her, and he'll, she'll love it. So I said, while I go in, Carlos, will you keep my grandma busy? And she loves the Taco Bell, so you should talk to her like the dog. Like you should do the voice for her. She'll love it. I came out, my grandma's like really quiet, and we get in the car, and I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, mm-hmm. Then we're driving, and I go, are you okay? Something going on? She's like, hmm. Oh. That little dog talks too much. <laughs> yeah, he thought he, was being, he thought he was being like this nice guy. Yeah, just annoyed her. Yeah. Okay. Jess is here, so it's going to be awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do love Jess. I do love working with Jess. I do. We have so many. Everybody we work with is so great, except for one, right? I mean, yeah. um, we won't say who that person. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I just want everybody I'm working with to be like, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Um, no, uh, gosh, well, I love Azula because it was written so well, you know, just such a great character. I love Azula because she's like kind of a, a release of energy. <laughs> you know, just like she's so fun to do. And, um, and I also, if any, does anybody watch Star vs. the Force? Yes! Yeah. Well, but I'm Queen Butterfly. I'm her mother. Yes, a star. And it's a very, very challenging role. I mean, she's written very well and she's... She's just such a wonderful mother, and they've got this wonderful relationship, and just lots of tension, and, and there's a lot of love there. And, and then I play Jackie too, Jackie, you know, the most big one. So um, that was just like one girl that skateboarded through a scene, and I did that voice, and people laughed. And then every time <laughs> they were like, now she's the main love interest of Marco. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was really like such a throwaway thing. I, um, and I also play Kelly, like the little, the little cheerleader. I, I love that show. It's such a star. is such a great like, written. Oh God, it's gonna get heavy too. Like, oh my God, this season. Oh It's coming. It's coming. Just get ready. And then the next season, thing. So crazy. Oh my God. Really? I can't even tell you. There's also. 
There's, I think, I wish I could tell you. I can't tell you because. No, don't. No, no, yeah. no, 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 I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. But. But yeah, I love playing, yeah, but I also love the writing in Queen Butterfly, too. And also being Daphne, you know, being Daphne, taking over that character was such a, a really uh, great, like, honor. Anytime you get to take over an old Hanna-Barbera thing, or just, it's just like, it's something you grew up watching, it's like an iconic thing, and you just can't believe that you're, I've been doing Wonder Woman now for like the past five years, so that's oh, been kind of fun. Yeah, so I'm doing kind of Wonder Woman on almost everything. There's a couple other women that, which who I, who I adore, Rachel Kimsey does one and then the other girl who did her for a long time shoot I can't remember her name was but yes Susan Eisenberg she's great I love her um, and then uh, but I've been doing I do all the Lego stuff and I do the Justice League stuff and um, anyway and um, and, um, and, I, and also I've been I did Jane Jensen recently and I, and I've been and I did Betty Rubble again so any of those characters that other people have done you just feel like so honored to be kind of like led into this little club of like you know kind of cool it's a cool voiceover club. Um, yeah. I feel like your default is Daphne. Oh, is she yeah. Your voice? Is that your I have to say, well, I mean, Daphne's more like, gosh, it's really creepy, you guys. What are we going to do? You know, just, there's this creepy old mansion and, oh, Scoob and Shaggy. So it's like, it's like a lot like my voice. It kind of sounds like Frankie, but I did on Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. That's pretty much like kind of where they came. Well, I. And Daphne's getting snarkier and snarkier, like me. Like, she started out, like, really nice, I think, when other people were playing her, and then I think I tried to be nice, like, the first two things that I did as Daphne, thinking, like, please don't fire me. And then after that, I was like, you know what, that's my part, so. Um, so now I'm just, like, snarky with all the girls that are flirting with Fred. I'm like, but they're like, Fred, we should go look for clues. I'm like, hey, you know. I'm like, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That I can laugh at that I guess star? Like that I would like to guess star on? Yes. Um I always wanted to be on SpongeBob. I never got to be on that. <laughs> I, I, I got to do so many other things, but and people of course people are like, you do cartoons, do you do SpongeBob? They just picked the one thing that I have. <laughs> Um, also, the ponies, I, I, I love because I love Lauren's vows, but you can't do it because the only reason that Tara can do it is because she's got a Canadian citizenship. She was yeah. born, and so and they're only Canadian actors. She's like the only person who lives. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I know. No way. I don't know. I love that. No. And they don't pay very well. And they also don't pay very well. Like, you, you, yeah. That's why they do everything in there. I know, I know. That dinosaur train show, I have three children, and that dinosaur train, yeah. I was Mrs. Carapable. I was like the first lady, or Mrs. Pteranodon. I was, and I, and I made a voice. It kind of sounded like this. She was, a, she was, you know, she was a, the flying kind. See, that's why I should be on dinosaur train. I don't know, even know, know the names. But anyway, I kind of like created this like kind of bird-like woman. And then they just like had, they went to Canada and like had the woman match my voice. It was so annoying. And I just thought, like, it's okay to go to Canada, but you can't play, you can't have auditions and have union actors bring their stuff to the table, like their ideas, and then go, okay, these are great ideas, copy them. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's okay for them to just have somebody do whatever she would have thought of, but I just was so annoyed by that. Speaking of union, the recent thing that was going on with the voice actors union and everything, mm -hmm. can you give the games? a brief, brief thing as to what was going on for people who aren't? Union actors and yeah. what exactly was going on, where you <coughs> fell on that, because I know there was a lot of conflict yeah. within the union. You know, I have to say, none of the actors I know were against the strike. I mean, like we voted like 99.8 percent or something to strike if they didn't give it, because it was. I mean, they're making like bazillions of like way more than movies or whatever, and they're giving us one session fee, which you know, it, it, it's a good little amount of money. It's 800 bucks. But 800 bucks, and they're going to make like 800 million? I mean, I don't even know how much they're making, but we are, we were asking for so little. Also, I know people that hurt themselves all the time, like they, because they can ask you to, you know, you can, the sessions are really long, they can ask you to scream the entire time, and the people won't be able to work, sometimes, you know, just that week, but other times, like, their voice is ruined forever, like, for $800, and they, their whole, like, livelihood is just gone. Was it trade 
train yourself to yeah. scream. Yeah. Yes, and also they have to limit it to like one hour of like really hard screaming the rest of it to be lines. And also we wanted, you know, a lot of times when we do our own uh, mocap, we, you know, people were hurting them, their backs, like hurting, you know, hurting themselves. So what's their justification for hiring a voice actor to do motion? You know, I don't know because I hardly ever do my own motion capture because I'm like, well, that's somebody else's, ex so. yeah. <laughs> they do a lot of facial capture on me because, you know, but, um, but yeah, like Azula, they actually they didn't do facial capture, but they actually filmed me and they actually like, she's supposed to look kind of like me. I think she does. I was like, wow, well, I went later on when I saw it. I was like, they really channel it for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, but, but people were getting hurt doing motion capture. <clears throat> and they, all we asked was like, we want a set, I mean, a stunt coordinator on set so that we can be protected because we're hurting ourselves. And um, I mean, this is like old timey union things we wanted. And also, we, people were like, it's about the money. You know, it's about the money. And it's like, well, a little bit it is because, <clears throat> and all we were asking for is like, one percent of the profit, or like not even like it's like was it like one one hundred the the profit or it's like one one hundred percent or something only if it makes over like five million dollars or something like that. I, I don't remember what the exact numbers were. And sad and like after and the nightmare they have to go through just to get that. And I've seen. I'm like, I was surprised you guys didn't have that protection built. Anyway, in right? Like it like it wasn't already like that. And then right? I realized what they treat. The only people they treat worse. That are the writers and the yes? The, 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 my friend works for Warner Brothers now. She just started. Yeah. So, saying that they outsource everything like Bangladesh. Yes, and, you know, I know, and that people work like I mean, people are working on a game. They don't see their friends outsource. or family for they. they just, there's those people that are creating the content or and they're yeah they're way way worse off. I but there's a lot of little places springing up. You know the little Bernie people. <laughs> The thing that's really neat that's kind of, you know, people are coming together, like, just politically and everything. Um, well, yeah, for, yeah, but, but people are coming together, like, to, to make their own, they're like, look, you do the animating, we'll do the voices, they'll do the thing, you know, and let's all split this, like, equally. So if the thing makes $800 million, then everybody's going to be really well taken care of. We didn't even want that, we just want, and, and also they were like, what if it's a little game that you don't know how many games fail? It's like, okay, well then, we won't take anything on those. How about just the ones that just are huge blockbusters? And they're like, well, you're, I mean, like when they're calling us greedy, I'm like, we're greedy? We're greedy? <laughs> I couldn't believe that. Anyway, but yeah, but there's a lot of little games now that I've been having auditions for that are like, you know, crowdsourced. And mom has a question. This is Hillary. This is Matt. Oh, you don't know? Oh, you're giving me five. I thought you had a question. I was like, you can just ask me and we're coffee. Um, but the, I, I, the guy who brought me here was like my, um, you know, the assistant when you're at a con, there's like the assistant, they're helping you with your money and all that stuff. Her son, Matt. And I just fell in love with him and he's just like, really smart and wonderful and he was like someday I'm gonna make a con would you come to my con if I made one and I was like sure kid you know and then like a few weeks later like a few years later he's like called me and here he is and this is his con and I just hope that it's doing well so I told Hillary you did whatever you did you did a really good job with your boy really good job anyway so thank you guys so much oh one more question one more. yeah um, while you were working on set for Star Wars Forces of Evil. Uh -huh. um, the final finale. How did you? How did you feel about that? How did it? Well, you know, I don't know. Where are we yet? Because I haven't. I've only. I know. Well, I hardly ever watch anything. Oh, okay. But well, what happened? And I'll tell you. The, the concert and the guy that was singing her song and he started blowing up her spot and she's like, oh, uh, it's. Everybody knows she it's like the book. Everybody yeah. Knows parents yeah. hit that. Everybody knows she's she in love with Marco. Yep. And then yes. after that, um, to, uh, uh, Moon had an epic fight with Toffee. Yeah. Yes. And her butterfly form. Yeah, yeah. she had the butterfly form. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that was, I just love that. I love, well, just being a mom. You just get into mom mode all the time. And then you feel like your kids, even though I have a really cool job, sometimes I feel like my son is like, oh, mom. You know, like, I mean, like, he, he, he loves Brizzy on on. You know, Brizzy voices, you know, okay, he loves her. And he was like, she, I mean, I, I, I love her too, but I mean, I just, he just holds her on such a pedestal. I'm like, I can do voices too. You know, and then, and then one day, I don't think she's on shows. She just does like tribute videos. It's awesome. She's adorable. I really love her. Um, but he one day was like, oh my God, mom, mom, Brizzy did a thing about you and your characters. And, she's about, and that's when I finally got some damn street cred. So anyway. <laughs> 
and even on Instagram, he's like, for my favorite voice actress ever, Brizzy. Like, he had like a picture, he, he has an Instagram with just his art, he doesn't have his face on it, but he has just his, his art. Tex Hammond on Instagram, he's actually a really good artist, it's like a cool art, you guys are artists? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you guys should check it out, it's kind of cool, it's kind of Picasso-ish, but he's only 10. Um, but, um, but yeah, he likes this picture of Brizzy, like my favorite voice actress, I was like, ow, wow, I, that's, ooh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but yeah, but I did get, I did get, but anyway, so I was going to say about Queen Butterfly, it's kind of cool, I, to me, I really loved it because I thought, you know, she's been like the mom that's always like harping on her and like trying to protect her and, and you know, Star just wants to break free and then she sees her mom just go into like crazy awesome mode. Yeah, yeah, she, sounds like her mom, she finds out her mom's a total badass and it's great, like she yeah. finally, and I think that's going to take them to this new level like in the next scene. Yeah, that's his, that's his Instagram, yeah. You'll find your Brizzy picture, it's a little bit down, it's like red, and anyway, um, but yeah, so I, that's what I, I, that's what I, I love that, because that kind of takes us into the next season where they're like together on a project, like on a mission, you know, so, yeah, yeah, as equals, not just as mother and daughter, but as equals, so I don't know how I'm supposed to be saying it. Yeah, it's good, it gets so good, it's good, and it gets dark, you're like, wow, this is like, this was like, hi, 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 Disney, and I was like, what's happening? Yeah. Good, it's good. <laughs> well, I had so much fun with you guys. But don't tell anybody the stuff that I told you. I know you're gonna tell everybody. Um, yeah, whatever. I've said it on podcasts before. Whatever. I hope that nobody stops hiring me. This <laughs> is like, bye, Gray. We love you. Anyway. <laughs>